Hi, I'm Lou, another episode of My Car Story. And we're here at the Muscle Car and Corvette National in Rosemont, Illinois, in Rosemont Convention Center. So come on out and see some great cars. And since it is the Muscle Car and Corvette National, we thought we'd show you a Corvette that just happens to be the first car you're going to see. And I'm here with Lance Miller. Lance, so good to see you. Good to see Lance, you. Lance, what did you bring that's uh, so unique? It's a one of one. What did you bring? The 1959 Corvette Purple People Eater Corvette. It's and a cool car. Give people a little bit of background. Why is the Purple People Eater so famous? Well, it's famous because it won its class in 1959 B production. In fact, it won every single race it entered, excluding one where Bob Bondurant won the race. However, he petitioned against it. Jim Jeffords, the driver of the Purple People Eater, and he had paperwork to prove it. So it was pretty neat to see that. He gave that to me many years later. <laughs> so this car was really a total winner and then what happened to it? And I'm going to feature the car as you tell the story. So come on Absolutely. alongside me. So what happened to the car? Because it did not look like this. And tell the story about with your dad and how this all worked out. Absolutely. My father, Chip Miller, had owned the Carlisle Events, which was held in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. What did they do? Those car shows. So at the very first car show in 1974, they found this ratty old Corvette. This Corvette with literally paint flaking off of it. Roll bar beat up, the chrome looked horrible, all flaking off. And they wanted to just decided with his friend, you know, $800, that's a lot of money to spend, right? So they decided, let's go in halves, we'll buy it together. Ken Heckert, my father Chip Miller, decided to make the plunge. They buy the car. So they purchase it, they decide, let's go and autocross this fun car. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we'll have fun with it. So they go out once, twice, three times, they get bored. Ken owns a restoration shop. They put it in the restoration shop. It sits in the corner for many, many years. And then all of a sudden, you know, on top of it, they decide to put wood laying straight on top of the body. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, you, you said this, this car turned into a what? A table. A table. <laughs> this was a table for many, many years, believe it or not. <laughs> so keep in mind, people. it didn't look One like One of the this. greatest race cars beating everybody would turn into a table. Okay, keep going. It did. It turned into a table. And uh, I mean, it, it's. Uh, you know, an old beater race car. It was yesterday's race car. Nobody knew that it was the Purple People Eater until my dad got this thorn and said, you know what, I want to find that old Nicky Chevrolet Purple People now, Eater. Lance, Corvette. how old were you when your dad was doing this, chasing this car? I mean, give me this, an idea. This was in the 80s, so, I mean, I, you know. You're still a kid. Was, yeah, exactly, 10 years old, you know. So he decided, I'm going to find the car. Did you know about this, that your dad had this challenge, and were you always a car guy too? I was always a car guy. I mean, it was one of those things as a kid. My dad always had cool cars. I was fortunate. And uh, it was just, you know, second nature to me. I thought it was normal to have a bunch of cars in the basement of your house, <laughs> um, which I guess I still do today. <laughs> you still have the itch. So so go ahead. So now it's... it's, it's gone from table and your dad has has this interest in finding the car again so it wasn't as easy as it sounds what no happened? not at all what he did was look up old pictures of the cars and he said you know I gotta find this purple people eater and then he noticed in pictures that the roll bar was identical to the one in the pictures of the old beater Corvette that they purchased and sure enough he decided to look at the numbers of obviously the VIN number found out that the car was indeed the purple people eater. Unbelievable. Can we pop the hood? Sure. The cool part is Ken owned a restoration shop so he did the restoration of the car. And he knew what to restore because well he's been there done that. Exactly. It's amazing what pictures can do for any restorer. And the engine that you're looking at now is a 283, so essentially stock, 290 horsepower, four speed, uh, just simple, but at the same time, plenty of horsepower to win races. And this was the big engine at that time frame as well. Absolutely. So we don't want to minimize that. No, no, I mean, a fuel injection yeah. motor, the thing runs great still today, well, as it did back then. Not, not only a big deal, but back to your point, this car just beat everybody. I mean, it, it you know, it annihilated them, and that whole purple running around the racetrack coming in number one had to get a little frustrated for everybody else after a while. Hey, it speaks for itself. Look at the number one on the side of the car, in the front of the car, and the rear of the car. That's it. Can we hear this car? Let's fire it up. Sounds great. So the exhaust is on this side. That's almost a like a, Almost like a Jaguar C-Type or something like that, straight out the side. You good? I'm good. Let's fire it up. <laughs> Wow.
wonderful. <laughs> it's such a cool car. It's such a cool car. Come on out. And as my dad would often say, life is good. I always say good things come to good people, and he was the best, and Ken was a great guy, too. And, I mean, this really fell in their lap. It's neat. Lance, what a fun car. What a fun time. So nice to meet you. Thanks for being on my car store. Thank you for having me.